physicsinfo.co.uk Using light gates to find speed, or more properly velocity. Light gates can be used to measure the time taken for a card to break a light beam. Knowing the length of the card and using speed equals distance over time, a computer can calculate the speed. The first thing you need, therefore, is the card to go through the light gate. Ideally, this should be quite stiff. The precision of your measurements is important. There's no point in having a light gate that can measure to a millionth of a second if you don't measure the length of the card equally as carefully. So check, check and check again. card is mounted on a small trolley or in this case we're just using a little fingerboard and using blue tack to hold it vertically. The trolley is pulled along by a string. So here's the light gate mounted but not yet plugged in. This is the sort of thing you will see on screen. We're using EasySense 5. First of all, we're going to measure velocity. We're only measuring it at one point. We call this point A. The length of the interrupt card is 5 centimetres or 50 millimetres. And we're not looking for too great a precision. Let's just stick to two decimal places. There are other options, but let's just stick to recording velocity. The weight associated with the falling mass provides a constant force, and we make sure to release the trolley from the same place each time. The reliability of any experiment is improved by repeating the results. This is a rough sketch of the apparatus being used. You'll see a trolley, light gate, the weights, interface and computer. And now a much speeded up set of results from which you could calculate an average. We mentioned the quality of results. These can be improved by repeating each reading, identifying anomalies and calculating averages, using a wide range of results, a whole range of masses, and controlling variables, such as the mass of the car, the position of the light gates, and the release point. Light gates can also be used to find acceleration. Measuring the speed in two places gives us the opportunity to calculate the change in velocity. A computer works out the average speed, the time, and finally displays the acceleration. This time we need two light gates, and the card will cut the beam of each one after the other. The light gates need to be adjusted so that the card does actually cut that beam of light. Different data loggers use different setups, but usually there is a connection between an interface of some form and the computer itself. In this case, a USB cable connects the interface to the laptop.
Each light gate or any other sensor is then connected to the interface. The first light gate plugs into input 1 or A and the second light gate plugs into input 2 or B. Try and make sure the wires are as out of the way as possible as they tend to ruin the experiment otherwise. At this point, you're ready to set up the software. This time, selecting acceleration rather than velocity. So, looking at this experiment at first from the end, you'll get one perspective. And then looking from the side, you'll see the other. and another rough sketch of the equipment used, showing the accelerating force, the two light gates, the trolley, card, interface and computer. We set the experiment up on an inclined board to hopefully compensate a little bit for the effects of friction. Don't forget to press start. And here's a set of results with just a single repeat for each changing value of the mass, or weight. The trend is quite clear, but repeats would improve the quality of the results. And that's it. Once again, thank you for watching.